Okay, I'm going to give you a review of my first ride today on the KTM 2024 KTM 250 XC. What I found, um, so all I can say is this is the best bike I have ever, ever ridden. It's absolutely amazing. They have nailed it. Um, and I was very, very nervous on going to a, a 250, and especially an XC. I thought it'd be too motocrossy, too snappy, not applicable really for, um, you know, for the bush. I had ridden a three, a brand new 2024 um, Husky TE uh, 300, and I must say it, it was the most underwhelming bike I've ever ridden it was so slow such a slug um i mean i mean really slow <clears throat> it just and the brakes on it the brake tech brakes on them are horrendous they just they are you know i'm coming off a of yz 250 fx with missing brakes i've had a lot of kdms in my life but um you know i've never thought they were you know even though they're brembo's the nissan brakes are amazing but when i rode the the Husky, I was so, I nearly just crashed into a wall. <laughs> it was so bad, you know, the brakes. You might disagree with me, but if you compare it to other bikes, they're, they're not that good. But <clears throat> anyway, the motor is purpose-built on the on the TE300s and the 300 XCWs. They're obviously built for, like, really lugging up hills and so on. And so I thought, well, you know, this is very racy, very aggressive motor. That's what I thought. It would be, you know, uh, it might be a handful. You know, I had ridden the 300 XC as well and uh, a 24 model with these new closed cartridge forks <clears throat> and was blown away by the motor. But I thought, you know, it's it's not really what I need. I don't need a 58 horsepower machine. I really didn't think I needed it. These are only two horsepower less. Um, but all I can say is... Uh, it's very, very well disguised the way the motor comes on. It's very, very linear. Um, I must admit, when I first rode it for the first few minutes, it was, uh, you know, we'll, let's talk about the motor. It was, it, it, it just, I thought, oh my gosh, I actually don't feel that 56 horsepower. Where is it? You know, coming off a of YZ 250F, you know, 250FX, I was... You know, but I th but what I didn't realise is just the motor just needs that bit of time to run in. So when I <clears throat> did continually did the loops um, over and over in a couple, a couple of spots and and some of the big open stuff, as you know, I ran it in for the first 15, 20 minutes, just taking it easy, and then started opening up a little bit. But the motor is very, very tight. Um, I don't think I've experienced that before on a two-stroke, but it was very tight. I normally just ride them and off I go. But considerably. Uh, very noticeable um, as you ride it. Um, <clears throat> so after about three or four hours, the, the bike was just totally freed up and I'm sure it's going to free up even more over time. But it is amazing motor. It is so good. The white map initially was, I felt, was a little bit slowish and I went to the green map in the tight stuff. Um, but as the bike wore in after about four hours, the, the green mat was was too snappy. It was too aggressive. Uh, when I say too aggressive, I'm talking marginally. Just just a bit over the edge. Just make just ties you a little bit. So the white map, as it started to run in, was just unreal. It was so much fun. And then as soon as you get into open trails with big jumps and so on, I just flicked it over the green, and it was just starting to really take off. It's, it's a great motor. What a what a machine. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about the. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about continue on with the motor. Um, the reason I went to 250 um, and not the 300 and not even a 150 or 125 in XC and, and why I didn't even go to a, an XCW or an EXC in Australia. Um, I just feel like this is just the perfect in-between bike. It, if, you, if you want something that's built for the desert, you've got to go big open ball. You have to. You know, they're just going to... You know, it's going to have so much, so much grunt. If you want something that will give you uh, slow, <coughs> you know, torque <coughs> that won't light up the rear wheel, and you've got to get up those big hills, and you're doing hard enduro, then go to a 300 um, XCW or a TE. Um, 
definitely a great choice. But if you want something that is ridiculously snappy and fun and, and nimble, you go to a, a 150. So you've really got to choose what you want. However, this bike in a 250 motor, I feel is absolutely perfect in the middle. It does everything. I, I lugged up some hills today that were monsters, and I mean absolute monsters. And it absolutely ate it for breakfast. No issues with bottom end. It's got a very, very low first and second gear. So uh, I never used first gear, second gear a few times, um, and it just pulled up everything without even, without even trying. Um, so just want to erase that myth that these are not enough bottom end. There's plenty of bottom end. And if you want to uh, change the flywheel weights, um, essentially to, to that effect, an XC has 540 gram flywheel weight. An EXC or XCW is 970, so 410 grams more. You can get a big chunk of that by going to a stealth sprocket, which is steel to about there, and then a lightweight um, for the rest of it. They're actually quite heavy in comparison just to these uh, alloys. Alternatively, you can go with a different tire. So I've got a Dunlop, um, which I thought this would be horrendous, a GMX um, AT8, which I guess it's an all-terrain. It was actually quite good. Um, but you know you can go to a, a say a Shinko, which is five uh, sorry seven point six kilos, and there's your flywheel difference compared to flywheel weight difference compared to a um, a Midas, which is five point four kilos, so two point two kilos lighter. So you, you you do the math and you just think about what that inertia feels like on the rear end. You know, when you're talking about 400 grams there, I'm talking about 2.2 kilos there. So you can get you can get this thing to have more, essentially a more torquey feel just by changing the tyre or just by changing, tweaking it ever so slightly with a, a rear sprocket. But in a lightweight tyre, lightweight sprocket, this thing, <laughs> it'll get up. I'm talking, you talk about some big hills and, and, and hard enduro hills. This thing didn't even, didn't even, bad an island it was absolutely faultless it was amazing so i wouldn't even touch it in fact i will go to a, a midas after this tires are worn out in a in a single green stripe um so that's the motor gearbox is was, is great the top end um i don't know what it's like because i don't have a speedo but it was it was pretty quick um, i heard they go as far as a 74 miles or 135 k an hour so that's pretty good um what else it never ever overheated i can just smell the coolant once when it was on some really tight nasty stuff um then i went to uh a very 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 technical riverbed um where we were riding and it was big rocks big i'm talking logs you know up up here you know just under the handlebar height some of them huge logs in in the slow stuff um, and it was just awesome. It was amazing. Suspension is insane. I have to say, now I've come off, I have had that many uh, KDMs in the years. I've hated the suspension on them. I've absolutely hated it. I've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars. You know, you talk about a, say, 15 grand bike, you've got to throw two grand on the suspension. I was sick to death of it, so I went to a Yamaha on a KYB. Great bike, which is over there. That's the Yami. It's my son's bike actually but um the uh they're just too stiff they hate the hard technical stuff it's just not made for it they're made for fast open stuff and so i rode a tx 300 a 24 model with these new forks and blew me away what i loved about this one it's just that lighter that only a 250 to 300 the difference in the inertia, the way the bike handles and feels is amazing. And the whole suspension package works really, really well. Um, and when I say really well, I don't think you can, uh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a cent on it. There's nothing I would do, oh, except for they come stock with um, these in the further back position. You need to have them directly over the center of that screw. So right in the middle of, of, of the fork. So they're dead center at the moment. 
and I would probably drop the legs down to, to have one less line showing. I definitely would because uh, it didn't head shake, but I can feel the tiniest bit of instability at when I was pinning it at top speed. So that's about the only thing. You're not going to notice that much in the cornering. Um, but at the moment, it's set up to, for tight cornering. So I would do that, but the way I've got it, I just set it up for my weight, which is about um, 83 kilos plus all the gears, so about maybe 88 all up. Uh, that is just for FYI, for if about 88 kilos, it's the bottom of that gray to the bottom of the thread. It's exactly 30 mil. And that will just, that would be perfect for your setup. Um, this was good. This worked well. I was in a lot of in and out of tight stuff and the, the brakes never faded at all. Although, you know, it wasn't, it didn't push it to its extreme. So motor, gearbox is great. Especially that first and second gear if you need it. I didn't use first, but I definitely use second. Suspension is amazing out of the box. Handling, oh man, <laughs> when I first got on it, I felt like I was on a mountain bike. It is incredible. Very, very, um, very, very nimble bike. And I'm so glad I didn't go to a 300 because this bike is just absolutely like a blade, man. It is quick, very, very quick uh, in the cornering. It is a ridiculously quick cornering bike. Clutch is great, great activation. I have ordered some of those Midwest engineering, whatever it is, um, levers which is supposed to take about 50 percent off the clutch pull um not as light as a cable clutch on a yamaha believe it or not on these so that's the only thing i would do to alter that so that should be here next week which would be great i'll, I'll let you know how that goes starter motor is fantastic very easy to start stop these buttons uh they work well um no issues with the start stop now i have got in australia with in victoria in particular you have to have a, a tail light and a headlight at all times what i did <clears throat> i disconnected the headlight uh, so it wouldn't drain the battery and i tested to see how well this light would go because um, i've heard that they they run flat and uh, what i did i just just ran the back tail light only for about 80 percent of the of the day and was ch checking all the time to see if there's any experience or feeling like the, the battery was dying down, but it didn't die down at all. It was perfect. So I kept it on for the rest of the day, um, right about four hours or so. No issues with the start stop. Battery's perfect. Didn't drain the battery, didn't even affect the battery. So I think they're about a five watt um, rear LED. So you're running about 30 or 35 watt stata. So it, it recovers amp, you know, uh, there's no, no problems at all. Um, fuel economy, I got no idea because I topped it up, um, but uh, I'm sure it's not bad. I've heard you get as much as 118k on a tank. I'd like to see that, but we'll see how we go. I did top it up a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Foot pegs are great. I never once touched the, uh, the, the, the header pipe. I had some head, like, big logs. When I say logs, they're as high as the head, uh, top of the headlight. So you know you picture that um and i was jumping through, through some of those in this extreme riverbed area man it was just a breeze there's no problem at all no impact on the pipe at all so they've done a great job of raising it about probably 30 40 mil and that's it so hope you like the review um if you have any questions give me a buzz you know or send me a message if you any comments um definitely hit subscribe and like and um i'll keep you posted on on the next adventures. Thank you.